let me take you back to the beginning. Many years, many, many years ago. 2003 is when this really all began. We got Tigger from Michelle's sister Heather when he was about six months old. And I really wish we had taken more pictures of him, but we weren't really thinking about that back then. He was such an epic meow, just a mellow kitty, and oh, how he loved his mommy. These two were best friends, just inseparable. If we were home, he was always with Michelle. Tigger, he was the meow. He was the meow of meow. He was the kitty, the tiggles, the meows a lot, the tiggly wiggly. But above all else, he was the big meow. He was Mr. Kitty. 2019, we lost Tigger. And Michelle was not only heartbroken, but she was devastated. And those fur parents out there watching this know grieving for a lost pet, I believe, is harder than for a person. People don't understand the emotional connection we have with them. And like I said, he was her best friend. And so I watched for a year as she grieved and that's hard because there was really nothing I could do to help her and she missed her buddy she missed her tickles and one day last year our daughter Shelby walks through the door with this little thing ears bigger than her head bright intelligent eyes full of wanting to be loved and Michelle's heart just melted you see, healing from loss, we all do in our own time, in our own way. And even though we still grieve at the loss, we now have this ball of fur wanting to play and love on us. And she took to Michelle quickly. This pair bonded and learned to read each other and always nearby one another. So Michelle named her Chitara and calls her the sweet sweet. We initially thought she was a Maine Coon due to her large frame and paws and big fluffy tail. And by the way, if you really pay attention, she's missing about the last four inches of her tail due to an accident prior to her coming to live with us. But as she grew and grew and grew, she blossoms into this beautiful Siberian forest cat. She is full of love. She's intelligent. She's gentle. And she's always with her mom. But we still see that little girl who came to us a year and a half ago. Well, shortly after, Shelby moved out, and Chitara was alone. Well, Shelby had her kitty, Lunchbox, who really had become a playmate for with Chitara. But with the move, she had no one. It was, you know, kind of sad because Chitara had, had no buddy. She was alone. It was a few months later that her best friend's daughter said that she had a kitten she needed at home. And she was so small, so full of joy, so playful, just a handful of happiness. And this little silver tabby with these beautiful large black swirls and the most gorgeous copper eyes. And so Wiley Kit was brought home shortly thereafter. And she took to Michelle, snuggling and loving on her. She loved exploring her new home, climbing on everything and everywhere, and she still does. You know, she's my little gargoyle kitty. Now these two, as cats have known to be, they took a little bit to get along, but they finally accepted each other as sisters, and now the two meows will follow their mom around everywhere. The kitchen, the sofa, the bathroom, of course. I mean, you can't go to the bathroom without a pet following you, especially cats. Why the kit loves to play in the water, and they on occasion will sun together in the window hammock. And as always, siblings have their moments, as we all do, and for these two, there's no exceptions. We celebrated Chitara's first birthday in February and why the kids in September. Well, as I said, we all grieve and heal in our own way. When Tigger was alive, we also had my puppy, Gigi. And she was the most beautiful brindle boxer that I'd ever seen. And we got her as a rescue. She 
gentle, she was loving, she was smart. She would wait for me at the door when I would get home from the boat and cry when I was going back. It's just heartbreaking to watch her sit there and be like, you know, Dad, don't go, I want you to stay home. We lost Gigi seven months before Tigger. And I'm not gonna lie, the, the pain still hurts. That was my girl. Well, one day this little thing shows up meowing and rubbing all over Michelle and she's sending me pictures and videos and I teased her saying we were getting a third meow and she adamantly said, no, we're not. Well, I got home a few weeks later and did not even think about this stray. We thought she went home, thought she had a home, and then she popped up again, hungry and skinny and just wanting someone to love her. Well, I fed her, gave her water much to Michelle's protest. And I looked around the neighborhood and asked people, you know, is this your kitty? And I looked for her home and nothing. And looked online and nothing. And three years to the day I lost my Gigi, I vetted this caramel tabby and brought home caramello. And much to Michelle not really wanting a third, I'd already bonded with her. And through so many struggles these past several weeks, it seems the girls are slowly accepting each other. And maybe starting to get along. <laughs> and struggles are not without promise. The girls are slowly learning to tolerate each other. Chitara showing she is still the queen kitty. Why the kitten Caramello try to decide who is the next in line. We're hoping that after Carol Merlo gets spayed next month, things will get better and maybe things will start to smooth out. You know, you women and your damn hormones. We haven't tried a trip yet. We thought about it for Texas Renaissance Festival this year and decided it best not to. Especially splitting them up after being together and slowly introducing and bringing them together and all that. We figured if we just took Caramello, or if we took Wiley Kid and Chitara, that there may be a setback, and we didn't want to do that. So we had our neighbors check in on them, and we actually left them at home this year. And, you know, small steps. Let them connect first before we put them in a truck together. And that's it. There's our kids. Wouldn't have any other way. <laughs>